Hello, today on my channel you will hear an amazing story about life. I hope you enjoy this story. This one struck me to the core. Honestly, I still can't forget it. Enjoy watching. Lully sat on the girl's lap, listening to his story with rapt attention, while he recalled his childhood, how he was happy with his grandfather, who took him in his arms like that. She told him about her life. You know, granddaughter, my grandfather was royalty. Yeah, don't laugh. A relative of his was a favor of the queen herself. He was very rich. He lavished him with lands and jewels. And my grandfather even saw them. I'd like to see them too. They must be so beautiful, given by the queen herself. You are right. Not only are they beautiful, but they're priceless. You are right. And then they disappeared. My father said my grandfather hid them, but he couldn't tell me where. He died. What a pity for the girl. I feel sorry for the grandfather and the jewelry and the way he's dressed. I think it's probably made up. Because as far as I know, your parents weren't very rich, and if they had something from the queen, they'd probably be better off. Yes, it was a difficult time. My relatives lived through the revolution and the war, so it was probably all lost. Mom came into the room to call them in for dinner. Dad, stop telling my daughter your stories. I'm sick of it. Let's go to the table or everything will get cold. I'm telling the truth and let my granddaughter know about her relatives. By the way, tell me, where is your husband? I don't know. He's been working late lately. They say he can't make it there, so he has to stay overnight. You are Joe's lying. There's no job that's bigger than your family. He's probably got a woman, so he goes to see her. And you this noodle, which he hangs on your ears, better take it off and check yourself because you're waiting for him like a fool while he's having fun with someone else. What are you talking about? Joe loves me and he loves my daughter, so we're fine. He doesn't love me. You can see it in them. He wanted a son, that's all. I just don't see how it's possible. It doesn't matter if it's a son or a daughter. It's your child, you have to love it. I look at Lily and my heart bleeds. She reaches for her father and he pushes her away. But how can you do that? He just comes home from work tired and she's like a leech on him all the time, so he gets angry. Woman, how stupid you people are. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, but it's no use. As stupid as you were, you're still stupid. Come on, let's eat, you said you'd keep it. May listened and pretended that everything was all right, though she herself began to doubt her husband. When they got married, Joe, but I carried him in my arms, cherished him. And then when their daughter was born, it was like he was changed. He got mean, irritable, always angry, always dissatisfied. May had to go round and round on him, but it didn't help. And he kept pushing his daughter away from him as if she was not his own. Okay, he'll come today. I'll talk to him, May thought. She watched her grandfather feeding Lily, thinking that he never loved her as much as he loved his granddaughter. They are together all the time, constantly then in the vegetable garden, then in the garden, then watching soccer together, then just go for a walk. Lily from the grandfather did not move a step away. A child can always sense when he's loved. Joe came home at night at one o'clock in the morning. May was awake, realizing that her father was probably right, and he had never stayed out this late before, which meant he had someone after all. She heard him walk into the kitchen, put the kettle on and began to make a noise with the dishes. Hasn't the mistress fed you? Joe shuddered and turned to his wife. What are you doing up all night? Tack here waiting for you, I think, here's my hubby, and at work is working hard, and he probably have fun, he only comes home to eat and sleep, yeah, Joe, don't talk nonsense, I've been working alright, or did your father put that shit in your head, what's my father got to do with it, you think I'm stupid, that I ain't got no brains, you've changed a lot, you hardly talk to me, we haven't slept together in three months, you're saying it's all your fault, dad, that's enough, I don't want to hear this crap, something you don't like, then let's get a divorce and I'm done. You come home, you want to rest, but you're not the one who starts nagging me. Honestly, I'm sick of it and I'm sick of it. You can pack your things and go wherever you want, but I'm exhausted. I'm not wooden, I'm alive. Do you understand? I need a husband and home. They are coming something. So you can choose to live in peace with me or you can go to all four corners. So that's how you talk. So that's how you talk. All right. I'll do as you say, I'll leave tomorrow. That's fine, and don't try not to, May said it and went to the bedroom. 
About five minutes later, she heard the front door slam. She couldn't take it anymore and sobbed into her pillow. Joe left the house, breathed in the cold air and went to his mistress Jill's house. She had been proposing to him for a long time to live together, but he wasn't ready yet. Today's display of his spouts had set the stage. He looked at her and realized that he no longer wanted to live with this woman. Everything changed not after the daughter was born, but after Jill said that his maid with the neighbor walked, that the daughter is most likely from him, herself saw them together. You think I'm lying to you? You think I'm lying to you? But think about it, he's got four daughters, and suddenly you have a daughter. Don't you think it's strange? Why are you talking about? We're neighbors, we're good friends, and just because she talked to him doesn't mean anything. And I'm telling you that they had something going on. Ah, daddy, that old dude. Oh, daddy, that old geezer, he's covering for his daughter. Why the hell is he living with you? Doesn't he have his own house? Yes, of course, in another village. That's where I brought May from. I met her there, and I traveled there for work. So we met, and then we got married. May's mom died last year, so she took my dad to live with us, so he wouldn't be so sad. Joe knocked on the door, realizing that Jill was probably asleep by now. Oh's there. What do you want? She whispered. Jill, it's me. Can you let me in? Joe, is that you? Did you forget something? I'm gonna live with you, that's all. Did your wife kick you out? I left. I looked at her and realized I couldn't be with her anymore. All I could think about was that she was with someone else. I can't forgive that. You were right, you can't forgive something like that. Go to bed soon. You have to go to work early tomorrow. You need to rest. May got up early in the morning. She stayed up all night, crying, wondering if she had done the right thing. After all, maybe he was at work. She was jealous of him in the middle of the night. Who could stand it? So Joe got angry. He's gone. But it's all right. He'll come back tonight. I'll talk to him calmly. We'll work it out. Joe's already gone to work. He's a little early today. Why do you care? We had a little fight last night and he left. I guess when he gets home from work tonight, we'll talk and everything will be fine. I don't think so, he won't. He's been living with someone else for a long time. The whole village knows about it, except you. So stop feeling sorry for him and looking for excuses. He doesn't love you. That's the whole story. You mean, like with someone else? Dad, you knew everything and didn't say anything? I didn't keep quiet, I told you but you don't want to listen to anyone either. That's the result. And what about me? How will I live now? It's okay. You're not the first, you're not the last. Women live without men. And you'll live. You're not alone. Look how your daughter's growing up, and I'm here for you. I think everything will be fine. But May was so sick at the thought of me, Joe, living with another woman. It can't be. I mean, they loved each other so much, and it all ended so stupidly and I didn't know how to get it back. Do you know who he's living with? I don't know. A died up girl, Jill, I think. I came here and the old folks told me he'd been tangled up with her since Lily was born. I thought it was nothing serious at first, but then I realized they'd gotten busy and sooner or later he'd have left. Lily hadn't seen her dad for a week and couldn't figure out where he'd gone. When she asked her mom, she was silent and her grandfather wouldn't say anything. One evening she went out with the children to play hide and seek and saw her daddy walking with some woman. She had seen her before, but she didn't know her name. Daddy. Lily shouted and rushed over to him. What do you want? Her father asked angrily. He looked at his daughter unhappily. Dad, why don't you come home? It's none of your business. Go home and don't you dare come near me, you neighbor's brat. Lily cried and ran home and became very offended that her father did not talk like that, and it was also unclear what the neighbor's brat was. May heard her daughter go home. Her eyes were wet with tears, and she asked, Daughter, what's wrong? Did someone hurt you? Yes, Dad. I ran up to him to find out how he's doing and why he doesn't come to us, and he threw me out and called me names. What kind of name calling? Lily repeated this interesting word, of which she only understood the words neighborly. May looked at her daughter incomprehensibly, and then shifted her days to her father. I don't understand what he meant by that. I don't know what he meant. He doesn't think Lily is his daughter. His roommate must have told him something about you. Women, they're all women. They have no peace. I'll see him tomorrow and talk to him. Maybe I'll get it out of his head. But how can you drive your own daughter away from you? Don't dad, don't get involved. 
I'll talk to him myself. If he thinks I cheated on him, I don't need a man like that. Whatever, but this way we can have a man-to-man -man talk with him. The next day, May went to her husband's workplace to have a serious talk with him. She didn't want him back, but she couldn't forgive him for hurting their daughter. What do you want? Joe asked as she approached him. What did you say to your daughter last night? We barely got her to calm down. What did you mean yesterday? What don't you know? You have a baby with your neighbor, and now you want me to raise her. With who? The neighbor? Are you out of your mind? I've only ever talked to him through the fence. You know, I asked him for strawberry plants and that's it. I never even went to his house, and he came to ours. I don't believe you. You're lying. So you believe the man who slandered me. But you don't believe me, the wife who loved only you? You don't believe me? I'll tell you something. I did the right thing in developing with you. I don't need a husband like you. May turned and walked away. And Joe was back at work when his partner came up to him. Is it true, John? I just overheard you two talking. I'm surprised at all. Because everyone here knows that your wife didn't cheat on you with anyone. Because we spread rumors like that quickly. Who told you that shit? That's what Joe said. You've got to listen to someone. She's the one who almost slept with the village. And now she wants to get married. You're a good looking guy, so she did her best. Only you're really stupid. And May in this sense I understand. After such a thing will never accept you. Joe waved it off. He didn't want to change anything now. Everything suited him. Jill surrounded him with such love that he felt he had done the right thing and had no regrets. May came home, went to her room and lay on her bed. She felt very bad. She didn't know how she was going to live her life and what to do. Even this morning, she did not believe in these gossips and thought that her husband would come to his senses and return to her. But now she did not need him, no matter how much she loved him, but she had pride and she would never forgive him for that. Grandfather, looking at the room where May was, entertained Lily, who wanted to go to her mother, but he did not let her go, telling her in the night what happens to little naughty girls. Grandpa, you make me laugh, but I really want to go to my mom. She's been sad lately. She's just tired and needs to rest. She's just tired. If we go to her place, she won't be able to rest. It's okay. Everything will fall into place soon. You'll see that things will get better for your mom. Jill cooked dinner and thought about Joe. She'd gotten what she wanted. Now the most important thing was to get him to marry her. She wasn't going to go around being a perpetual mistress. She remembered her first love. His name was Cameron. How she loved him, and she thought he loved her too. But it was simpler than that. He just wanted to sleep with her, that's all. After it happened and he took her innocence, he said he didn't want her. Did you think I'd love a girl with a family like yours? And you thought I'd love a girl with a family like yours? Well, no, it's different for everyone. My parents are rich and your mom's an alcoholic, so you and I have nothing in common and we'll never be together. But Cameron, why would you do that? You could have told me you don't love me and that we're not on the same path. Just for your collection. I've had you for 28 years, you're a loser. Now goodbye. Don't you think I'll change my mind? I don't need you. Jill then very much worried. She, like all girls, dreamed of finding her prince and marry him. But as it turned out beauty is not enough and that the man is not as good, brave as she had in her dreams. Then there was Justin, who wooed her beautifully, and then when he got his way, just like that he said that they were not on their way, just left. And then she heard he proposed to Sonia, an inconspicuous girl who was a gray mouse to Jill. She took that one hard too, thought she must be picking the wrong men. Naturally, she's very beautiful of course, she dreamed of a handsome husband, but it didn't work out. So she should look not at handsome men, with whom she has no luck, but at smart ones. The smart ones she had a lot of guys whose names she couldn't even remember. It was the same. They'd go out with her for a while, and then they'd just dump her. She didn't understand why, but they'd get married later, but not to her. And then the village began to go about her bad rumors, but she did not care. She realized that apparently marriage was not for her. So she decided to just go on living her life for the fun of it. She'd been looking at Joe for a long time. He was handsome and smart, but he wouldn't even look in her direction. Then he brought his wife from another village, but to give him credit, she was pretty too, and he married her, but that didn't bother her. She was now a more experienced girl in such matters and did not want to hurry. She reminded herself at this moment of a fox, which is hanging around a rooster to catch it and eat it. 
In this case, she realized that there was no need to hurry and she would definitely think of something. She was very upset when she saw them walking together to the market one day. He was holding her gently. She was in a position. Jill realized that all was lost and that now Joe would never be with her. And she was so angry that she decided she would do anything to happen with her. And the baby was no obstacle. May had a baby girl and Jill had a chance. She really didn't know what she was going to do next, but hope warmed her soul. And she told herself that this time she would make it work. And it did. Ona once passed by the house where they lived and saw her talking to a neighbor. She came closer and overheard what they were talking about. May was asking him for strawberry plants, nothing special, and she was about to walk on by. But then an interesting thought flashed through her mind and she decided to take a chance. Jill worked in the factory cafeteria, feeding the workers, Joe being one of them. That day she asked him to help and unload boxes of stew. The loader's drunk again, and I can't carry such a heavy load myself. You help Joe, and I'll thank you. Joe didn't suspect a thing. He started carrying the boxes and putting them where Jill showed him. Then, when it was done, she called him into the back room and kissed him. Joe didn't respond to the kiss, pulled back from her and said, You can't do that, Jill. I'm married. I got a kid growing up. I feel sorry for you. You're such a good man. You need another wife. Not a wife like yours. What do you mean? I mean that I saw your wife making love to your neighbor. It can't be. What are you talking about? What affair? What neighbor? The usual, I don't have to explain it to you. You're a grown man and you know how it's done. And then think about it, you wanted a son, even though you had a daughter, and your neighbor has four girls. That's the result. Joe didn't want to believe it. He was about to leave, but Jill was like a snake, whispering something, saying that he needed to change himself to make his soul feel better. Then it happened. Joe liked it. He started spending every day with Jill. They met at first in the back room. Then he went to her house in the evenings. Everything was going great. Only the council wasn't appeased. Only Jill wasn't happy with everything. She really wanted Joe to leave his wife. But the years went by. He still slept with her the same way and went home for the night. That didn't suit her either. She couldn't understand why Joe's wife knew her husband was going out and didn't chase him away. She decided to encourage it and that after she spread how much and rumors about them that he was fine with the two of them, that he was going to marry her. It didn't work right away, but it did. Now he lives at her house. They sleep in the same bed, but that's it. He, as she realized, was not even thinking of marrying her. She decided to push him to this step, because he, because she wanted to live like a normal woman, to also walk down the street with her head proudly raised. True, she had one secret. She would never be able to give birth to him, but he didn't need to know that. When Joe came home, she set the table and decided to have a serious talk with him. Look, Joe, don't you think it's time you and I thought about us? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's time we got married. How many times? I'm a woman. I'm a normal, hardworking woman. You and I are living like lovers, and I don't want that. Come on, is it bad? What's wrong with that? What's a passport stamp? We're already husband and wife to everyone. You shouldn't say that. What am I gonna tell our kid if dad doesn't want a stamp on his passport? No, Joe, that's not gonna work. You better think about it because I don't want to live like this anymore. Are you pregnant? I think so. So I thought I'd get a belly on us and the women would laugh at me. So I thought I'd offer it to you after all. We're having a good time. So what's the matter? Joe didn't want to marry Jill. He was happy with everything. But when she told him they were having the baby, he decided to apply to the registry office. May came to work and her partner, who worked with her at the pharmacy, asked, Well, how are you? You're going to your ex-boyfriend's wedding. They're getting married. How did you heard? Have you heard? I have. And I wish you all the best. But I don't want to go. I'm ashamed of the fact that I once loved that man. Well, the whole village is shocked. Well, the whole village is shocked. Trading you for a girl like Jill. There's no place to test her. Maybe she's got him hooked. I don't believe that. She's just a sly woman, that's all. At first, I thought I'd fight for him. And when she told me that it was me who walked away from him, they, he, and that it was me who gave birth to another man's child, that's it. I immediately opened my eyes. I realized I didn't need a man like that. So with Jill, they're the perfect couple. They're perfect for each other. You were right. They found each other. 
Hey, how's Lily? How's your dad? It's good that my daughter's already in second grade, and my dad's fine. I'm very glad he lives with us, he helps me with my daughter. Thanks to him she studies well, because they do lessons together and learn poems. And here she was bad at math. He explained everything. Now she's doing math like a nut. That's great. What about Tony? I heard he's been hitting on you. Yeah, he's a smart guy, but I'm not ready for that yet. And you know, I'm afraid to get married a second time. I don't have faith in men anymore. I don't want to get dumped again. But you're not making any sense. Just because you're unlucky with one doesn't mean you'll be unlucky with the next. I don't know, we'll see. Jill and Joe were driving down the street in the wedding car when he saw his ex-wife walking with Tony. They were talking about something, and when he said something to her, laughed merrily. He couldn't understand why, but he felt unpleasant and sad, as if something had been taken away from him, that something was very dear to him. Jill noticed his gaze and immediately leaned over to hug him. Why are you so sad? Today is our day, and I won't let you be sad. Are you upset that we didn't invite your ex-wife? I don't think she would have come herself. Besides, she's got another life now too. Let her enjoy it. Jill felt unpleasant, and Jill thought that may have found an even better option that she had before. Why do people like them always get lucky? I ran around with Tony for a year, and he wouldn't even look at me. And now here's May, and she's walking with him, and she can see they're good together. She looked at her husband again, who was looking sadly out the window. That's all right with me. I'm a married woman now. Let anyone say a bad word about me. I quickly shut them up. There weren't many people at the wedding, then invited more guests, but not all of them showed up. Joe knew why, because his friends didn't approve of his choice, told him he was making a huge mistake, only he didn't listen to anyone. Jill knew the reason for the lack of guests too. She didn't really have any friends. She didn't want to meet her husband's friends, and neither did they want to meet her, because they all knew everything about each other. She realized that it was a miracle that Joe had married her, because if he had refused, she would probably have had to leave the village and look for happiness elsewhere. They partied until 7 p.m., and then the guests began to leave, and Joe remembered with longing that at his and May's wedding there had been many guests, and they had partied for two days, but this time I was different. May walking with Tony on her arm was on his mind. For some reason he felt sick at the thought of them being together. Realizing it was selfish, he tried to wash his thoughts down with vodka, but it didn't help much. Jill could see that something was happening to her and was angry with him. You are not paying any attention to me at all. What are you thinking? She asked angrily. About why the hell you're wearing a veil? Don't you know it's for innocent girls? And you're a woman and you're acting like a girl all over the place. It's my wedding. What I want to wear, you can wear. I forgot to ask you. What's wrong with you today? You don't seem happy. Think about our son, who's going to be born soon, and you'll feel better. Joe, have another drink and sigh. A baby's a great thing, and the son's a great thing. You're right, honey. I'm sorry. I've been tired lately. We've been preparing for the wedding for days, so I'm exhausted. So I'm sorry. It's okay. I get it. I'm tired of all this. Let's probably go home. It's almost time for everyone to leave anyway. Tony was already thinking about asking May to marry him. She had been much kinder to him lately, smiling at him when he came to see her and even inviting him to her house. He was already acquainted with her father and Lily, who happily ran to meet him with a shout, Uncle Tony, hello. It was really scary that she would refuse him. But then, thinking that if she was still thinking about her husband, it was now in the past. This Joe did the stupidest act of his life, Mary Jill. Everyone in the village was still in shock, and she, of course, was a good woman, got her way, caught the fool in her own net. He didn't realize what happiness she was with him all the time. He traded gold for copper, but he hadn't realized it yet. And he didn't want to rub May the wrong way, nor so he decided not to put it off, but to talk not tonight. It had been four months since the wedding, and Joe was beginning to look more closely at his wife. He remembered when May was expecting a baby. She was already showing a tummy then and was nauseous all the time. And Jill was walking around like nothing had happened and hadn't gained a gram of weight. Jill, how are you doing? How are you doing? How's our son in the tummy doing? I just look at you and I wonder why you're still the same and your belly's not growing. It's just my body shape. My gynecologist said it's fine and that you won't see your belly until you're eight months pregnant. I see, 
but then I see if the doctor said so, it must be true. Jill bit her lip and went into the kitchen. In her happiness as a married woman, she had forgotten all about the baby. And now she had to think of something to make a play so that her husband would not guess anything. Joe was walking home from work when he saw Sarah walking towards him. She was a neighbor, his parents, and he knew from childhood. She worked as a gynecologist at the township hospital. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, Joe, I'm doing great. Hello, I think you're doing great too. I heard you got married for the second time. Married, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. How's my Jill, how's my son? Is everything okay with them? I'm a little confused. What does Jill and my son have to do with it? What are you trying to tell me? What do you mean? What do you mean? She's having the baby with me. She says she's having a son. So I'm asking you how they're doing because I know you're a great gynecologist and you know your stuff. Now I understand. So I'll tell you what, thank you for the compliment. And as an excellent gynecologist inform you that Jill is not pregnant because that can't happen, she's in Fergo. What? How's that? That's how it happens. Well, how can I tell you this? That can't happen. Maybe you just don't know. Jill told me herself that everything's fine. Maybe she's seeing another doctor, but maybe she's going to another town. I don't know about that. I've told you everything I know. So I'm sorry, Joe, but there's nothing I can do to help you. Joe said goodbye and went home. He didn't want to see Jill. He realized that he needed to think it over, to accept the idea and to understand why she had deceived him so much. He decided to stop by his friend's house that he had been friends with since high school. After he married Jill they had stopped talking altogether because his wife and his friend couldn't stand each other. Come on in. What's wrong with you? You look sad. I met Sarah. She told me some things and here she is, digesting the information. Only I'm not getting anywhere yet. I can't believe Jill tricked me. I can't believe Jill tricked me. I can't believe she tricked you. I mean, it's cheating too. You're the only one who's gonna believe that bullshit. And now you're doubting it. We all told you then that she's not who she says she is. You know it well, but we still don't understand what happened to you. You think she lied to me about May too? You were an asshole. Of course she did. She just needed you. She did. That's all. I don't know. I guess you got a little weak. So she got you. So just hang in there. You'll see what happens. What am I supposed to do now? Live, you married her. She's your wife now, so get over it and move on. But I can't. And then I can't get May out of my head. I can't stop thinking about her. She was faithful to me, and I fell into a trap like a fool. I finally realized it, but it's too late. Tony proposed, she's probably gonna say yes, so you're out of luck. What proposal? You were just saying the same thing over and over again. How? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna live my life? Be a man, you made a mess, now you have to clean it up. And you know my advice to you, don't get involved with May. You've hurt her so badly, she'll never forgive you, but it's okay for her to get married too. She'll live a normal life in love and peace. You live your life as you want, but don't mess with her. We'll see about that. I know she loves me and I'll bring her back. She'll be my wife again. Jill's got it all figured out. She'll tell you she slipped on the stairs and fell and lost the baby. It's a good thing she didn't hurt herself. She could have broken her neck. She took makeup and drew black shadows under her eyes, as if she was very ill and barely alive. Then she lay down on the bed and chose a pose for a long time, so that it was not only believable, but also beautiful. Then, after a little thought, she just decided to lie on her side, encompass her belly and snuggle into the pillow. Joe walked into the house, made his way to the kitchen, got a glass of water, and went into the bedroom. Realizing that Jill was probably in there, he saw her lying on the bed with her arms wrapped around him. Jill, is something wrong? He heard crying and sat down next to her to see what had happened. Jill turned her face wet with tears to him and began to tell him what had happened to her. After she finished her story, she looked at her husband, expecting him to pull up, but he was like a stone statue. He was silent and didn't say a word. Apparently in shock at what had happened, she thought, and added in a low voice, but it's okay, honey. Don't worry. The doctor told me that I need to wait a year and then you can get pregnant again. I think you're okay with that. Sarah is such a sensitive doctor. She told you the right thing. I saw her today. She told me something too. 
that you'll never give birth to me in a year. She probably didn't want to tell you that so you wouldn't be upset, yes? I don't know what you're talking about. You know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. Just tell me why you lied to me. You couldn't tell me the truth, but I'm not lying to you. She's the one who's been telling you shit. You're blaming me for everything now? Yes, everything. One more thing, I took a DNA test to find out whose daughter Lily is, and what do you think they told me? How's that? Do you know how much that procedure costs? So you just gave money to know that your daughter is yours. You should have bought me a fur coat with that money. And then Jill realized she blurted it out. She shrank back and quieted down. She was swept away by all her cobwebs that she had been weaving around Joe now shattered in an instant. And now she was focused, looking for a way out of this situation. Yes, Jill, you thought this through beautifully. Well done. There's no telling. Let me tell you something. Did you really think the truth wouldn't come out? You didn't think it through once. Are you going to tell me something now? Why are you saying anything? I see. Then I'll speak for you. I'm going to file for divorce tomorrow. You're not my wife anymore. Joe, don't you understand? I love you. I love you more than my life. That's why I did it. I couldn't stand to see you in pain with another woman. So I decided to pack it up. I just saw your wife talking to that neighbor of yours. That's what came to mind. Well, we were happy, weren't we? We were good. You're crazy. But how could you think of such a thing? Don't you realize I have a daughter growing up there and her father abandoned her? I'll never forget how he pushed her away. And she cried and ran home. May came to see me the next day and I was rude to her then too. All because of you. What have you done, Jill? But I'm sorry, you fool. I told you I couldn't live without you. So I did all that. Just don't leave me, Joe. And I can't take it. I can't live without you and I can't breathe without you. I'll die without you if you leave me and my life will be over. Wait a minute, Jill. What do you expect me to do? Stay with you after everything you've said. Joe, you're not listening to me. I did it all for you. To make you a happy man. You're not happy with me, are you? Do you remember what you used to say to me all the time? I remember everything, and I didn't love that man of yours because you couldn't believe the nonsense I told you about her so easily. If you had loved me, you would have checked it out and found out I was lying. But you didn't do that and you abused her, slept with me. You came home to your wife and didn't hide the fact that you had another woman. Because I'm an idiot. But now I'm gonna make it right. I'll do anything to get her back. You won't. Tony proposed that she's not stupid. She'll say yes. He's such a great guy. And I spent a year on him myself. But he didn't fall for any of my tricks. So I left him alone. She won't marry him, do you hear me? Never. Never. She's mine, and I'm not giving her away. Well, we'll see about that. Wipe your snot and listen to me carefully. You won't get a divorce, do you understand? Now let's go to the kitchen. I'll feed you. You're probably hungry from work. Fuck you. Joe shouted to her and went to the exit. He went outside, not knowing where to go. His feet carried him to the house where he heard his daughter laughing. Apparently, she was playing with her grandfather again, although the girl was already big, probably in the fourth grade. What an idiot he is. He lost his family, but nothing. I'll do anything to get it all back. Jill walked around the house wondering what she should do. She could see that Joe was serious and that he would probably go and file for divorce. And if he divorced her, she'd have to leave because she'd be the laughing stock of the village. No, I'll think of something, but he won't get rid of me that easily. I've wasted all these years trying to get him for nothing. I've got to do something. I've got to talk to Tony to keep him away from Joe and get him to marry her sooner. Then she'll get it right again. He'll have nowhere else to go and he'll come back to her. May watched Lily looking at the crossword puzzle with her grandfather and she smiled, but her thoughts were far away. She was thinking about Tony's proposal and she didn't know what she should do. As a man she liked him. He was handsome, strong and smart, as women more often said. We were behind him like a stonewall. But her heart told her that this was not her man and that she would not be happy with him. She tried in every way not to think about Joe, but all the time looking at her daughter, remembered him. She realized that he would probably never come back to her. He had married a friend and they were happy. She still waited like a fool for some miracle. She dreamed that one day he would come to her, tell her that he couldn't live without her and without their daughter. And there she would look at her father and think that if that happened, her dad would be against them getting together and filled how angry he was at Joe, calling her all kinds of names and saying he's a wimp, 
I'm not a man. Tony was driving to work when he saw Jill standing in the road, waving at him to stop. What does this one want? He grumbled unhappily. Tony, hi. I'm sorry to stop you like this, but I need to talk to you. Aren't you ashamed? You're a married woman and you're back to your old self. I told you we'll never be together. I don't even want to touch you. You're doing it again? Did you finish your fiery speech? I said serious talk. Let's go somewhere where we can't be seen together. He realized something was really wrong. I'm not bickering anymore. I started my car and drove towards the river. It's early in the morning. There shouldn't be anyone there. When they arrived and he turned off the engine, he asked, but what's wrong? Speak. Listen, do you like May? May? What May? Don't be stupid. You have a lot of them. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Why? You've said you proposed. Did she say yes? No, she took a week to think about it. No, she's a good girl. She doesn't do anything in a hurry. She thinks things through before she makes a big decision. I respect her for that. Why? Joe's just dumping me, trying to get his ex-wife back. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. What's the big deal? It's a long story, so let's not waste time on it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I need to know what to prepare for. So tell me I'm in no hurry. I'm in my job as boss. I have the right to be late. Jill started her story from the beginning. She told Tony in detail how she'd won Joe over and what made him marry her. You were a strange woman. What were you thinking? A year? Two years? Three years? Five years? And then what? You would have needed a child. And what would you do? Don't you know me? You think of something. Take him from an orphanage. There's plenty of options if you wanted one so badly. You better tell me what to do. I don't think I can do it alone. Saw so it, I get it. And you know, I have a plan. But you have to stick to it. Got it. No amateurishness. Just strictly according to my plan. Yeah, and I'll organize everything. Now let's go. I have to get ready too. May was on her way home from work when Tony pulled up in front of her. She smiled, and I got into his car. He handed her a huge bouquet of red roses, smiled and said, Listen, May, it's been getting pretty sad lately. Here's what I was thinking. Maybe you take a vacation. You and I and Lily go to the sea. We'll go on vacation. How would you like that? No, Tony, I can't do that. No, I remember what you asked me and that you're waiting for an answer. And I don't know what to tell you yet. I just don't want to rush you. I'm asking you to come with me for a vacation. I promise that everything will be very decent. Well, you know me, and there you and I can get to know each other even more. But that doesn't seem right. I mean, I know we'd go as husband and wife, but you're a single man, and I'm single, and suddenly we're going to the sea together. What will she and people say then? May, it's obvious to everyone that you're worried. They know that you and I are the bride and groom. Right? The whole village is waiting for you to say yes. Let them think you said yes, and we're just going on vacation. Besides, as far as I know, you went to the doctor yesterday, and what did he say? Yeah, not feeling well lately. He said I need less stress, more positive thoughts, that's all. You see, you need to rest, so don't worry about anything and just go. And just go. And Lily will love it, she's never seen the sea before. Tony, I need to think. Let me talk to my dad, and I'll do what he says. All right, all right, sweetheart, and most importantly, I can't think about you being unhappy anymore. I need you to be the happiest woman I know. Joe's partner ran up to Joe and said, Listen, Jill's in the hospital. They say she's in serious condition. What happened? I don't know. Well, you go over there. You're her husband. Find out what happened. I won't go. I don't trust her anymore. She's deceived me more than once so let her clean up her own mess. But you can't do that, she's a woman. You can't do that either. Besides, nobody forced you to get married. You agreed to marry her yourself. You played her wedding. Why should you blame it all on her? If it's to be blamed, it's both of them. You were right, I'm not myself today. I'm confused, I don't know what to do. When I found out that she lied to me first, when she told me that the daughter wasn't mine, that Minnie and I got her pregnant, then she told me she was pregnant and I found out she couldn't have kids. I was totally freaked out and confused. So you should have listened to people and not Jill. We'd all told you May couldn't have fooled you, but you didn't listen to anybody. For you, 
Your Jill was telling the truth. Now you gotta figure out what's next. Now get to the hospital, the foreman's let you go. Joe went into the room and saw Jill, who was very pale, that he was scared out of his wits. What happened to you? How did you end up here? Just when you left last night, I had a heart attack. Yeah. Good thing the neighbor came by in time to call an ambulance. I probably wouldn't be alive if she hadn't. Joe, please don't leave me. I've done everything I could to make us happy. Think about it. If you want to, let's get out of here so we don't have anything to remind us of the past. How about it? Do you agree? Besides, my doctor says I need a change of climate. Why don't we leave? I don't know, Jill. I don't know anything right now. It's just, you know, I can't live with you after what you've done. You're the one who lied to me, and I was a fool to believe you. And now it's over. I don't love you, but I've never loved you. I just wanted to hurt my wife, that's all. But she's stronger than me. She's been raising her daughter all these years and keeping men away from her. Only I realized it too late, but she'll probably marry this Tony guy. Probably. I heard they're taking the whole family to the seaside together. Maybe you and me, when I get out of hospital, we'll go too. What about the sea when they go? I don't know if you're so worried about it. Go and find out. Joe ran out of the room and ran down the hospital corridor. Only one thought was beating in his head, not to let him go along for the ride, because he realized that then, May would be lost forever and she would never come back to him. Jill threw back the blanket and jumped off the bed. He didn't care about me, he went after that quiet girl of his, but what was it about him that attracted him so much? What's wrong with me that's wrong with her? It's like a magnet, I can't do anything about it. I wish they'd go away already, otherwise I'd lose my husband and Tony, and then I'd lose my May, who makes him drool. I wonder what it is about her that makes them so hungry for her. Joe ran to May's house and forgot to knock, went in, and she was sitting at the table and writing something, and she looked up at him surprised, and then asked, What do you want here? Why have you come here? He fell on his knees in front of her and said, May, please forgive me. It's my fault. It's only now that I realize I love you more than my life, and that everything about you wasn't true. Please forgive me, because I can't live without you. You were too late, Joe. I'll never take you back, and your daughter's long since forgotten about you. The day you pushed her away from you, I'm done. I just realized you're not a good man, and I'm telling you again, you and I will never have anything more. So please leave our family alone and be happy now, I don't need you. May, don't say that, I know none of this is true. You still love me because we're two halves of the same whole. I made a huge mistake, and you have no idea how sorry I am. Please don't send me away, I feel so bad without you. I don't want to talk to you anymore, so get out of the house I beg you. Joe realized it was useless to insist now, you would still have to fight for her. He knew that now he wouldn't rest until he got it again in me. After Joe left, the peace of mind that man had tried for so many years to re-establish left her. She looked sadly at the door Joe had just walked through, and thought that she had done the right thing in not agreeing to go to the sea with Tony, and she wasn't going to marry him. She realized she didn't need anyone but Joe. Yes, he was confused. Yes, he'd done wrong but he was remorseful, and she could see it in his eyes. Tony went to Jill's house and asked, Can you tell me why the hell you left the hospital? I had such a hard time getting you admitted. I come in and they tell me you've gone home. What the hell are you doing? Jill looked at him, poured herself a glass of vodka and drank it in one gulp. At nothing, he doesn't care about me and how I feel. Enough I'm tired, I can't take it anymore. You can't have a man who doesn't feel anything for you. It's my fault for starting all this, so that's enough. I'll wash my hands of it, you can go ahead if you want, but my advice to you is that it's useless. It's not for me, but I'm gonna get what I want, and I'm not gonna let Joe get in the way of that. All right, I'll do it without your help. He left and Jules stared at the closed door, but little did she realize that he wouldn't succeed because those two loved each other and would be together. Lily and Grandpa came home from fishing and saw Mom sitting at the table crying. Mommy, what's wrong? Why are you crying while we were out with Grandpa? Did someone hurt you? No, my dear. Everything's fine. But it's just something I remembered. I get like this sometimes too. When I remember something sad, I want to cry. Where is it that you have such a thing? Grandfather looked carefully at his daughter and then shook his head. No, I don't have such things. And you, daughter, tell me what happened. Joe came and said that he loved her and that he was sorry for what he had done. 
he wants to get back together with him. What did you do? I kicked him out and told him I'm doing great and I'm getting married. What are you doing? Good for you. He's got no business here. Enough. He's made all the girls suffer. And about Tony, if you feel something for him, then go out, and if not, then honestly admit it to him. He's not a bad guy, he's mean, but that's okay. But he's not a slob. May decided not to postpone the conversation with Tony, if before this day she still had doubts. Now the doubts are all gone and at heart was very good and calm. He as usual came to her in the evening with a huge bouquet of flowers. She took the flowers and put them next to the bench. She didn't invite him inside today because she planned to have a serious talk with him. You seem strange today, is something wrong? I just thought I'd give you an answer. I just decided to give you an answer. I thought long and hard, and I realized I don't love you, Tony. You're a very good man, a wonderful friend, but that's it. I can't be your wife because I don't have any feelings for you. I realize I don't want to cheat on you anymore. You pulled me out of my ennui, tried to entertain me somehow and you succeeded. I'm living and enjoying life again, but that's it. So you're turning me down? I don't want to deceive you. I don't want to deceive you. If there's no love, there won't be love. I didn't believe in that old saying, we'll get along, we'll get along, we won't get along, we won't get along, and you need another woman. Strong, powerful, not like me. How can you know what kind of woman I need? Just because you looked into my soul. You don't even know me and you're already telling me the kind of woman I want. I thought you were smarter than that. But as I see now, I was wrong. I know why you turned me down. Because Joe was on the horizon. But if you're determined not to lie to me, am I right? He came to see me. That's true. But that doesn't mean anything because I kicked him out. He did. But she kicked him out. Well, she kicked him out. And then she sat there sobbing and wondering if you were too hard on him and if he'd come back after what you told him. Am I right? May sat there, dead or alive. Tony was telling her everything she'd really felt when the door closed behind Joe. No, it wasn't like that. I started making excuses. I realized she's lying to him and to herself now. Okay, I get it. You're a woman of character and you don't forgive a traitor. And I'm really glad because we won't be very disappointed if after what he did to you, you take him back. Then I'm off. I don't dare bother you anymore. Tony left. And May began to sit on the bench outside the house. And somehow she felt ashamed that she had told him the wrong thing. All she'd ever wanted was for Joe to come back to her. She'd forgotten what they'd had before. Just seeing him made her body ache because she wanted to feel his hands on her body again. Joe walked and thought about the fact that he had nowhere to go. He had left his home to May when he left, even though Jewel had resented it. At first, she told him to bend them over. She wanted them to go to her house, but he didn't want to listen to anything because he realized that May had a job here and Lily went to kindergarten. Besides, she was already used to it. Of course, he realized that he would go crazy if they left here and he never saw them again. He decided to walk down his street and look at his house from the outside to hear Lily's laughter, May's laughter, Grandpa's bass voice telling them something as always. As he approached, he saw someone sitting on a bench. He realized it was May. Hi, are you doing something alone in the dark? Hi. Hi, I'm just sitting here, looking at the stars. What are you doing out at night? Nothing else to do. I just don't have anywhere else to go. I left Jill when I found out the truth. She lied to me about you too, but I believed her. Now I don't know where I'm gonna live. Well, I don't know what to think. Let's go home, it's your home too. May, I need to know, have you forgiven me? I need to know, because I realized I love you and our daughter, and I want to be together again. I forgave you a long time ago, but you didn't expect my father and daughter to forgive you right away. So just be patient, okay? I understand, of course. The important thing is that we're together. I can handle the rest. They went home. The house was quiet. They must have been asleep. They went quietly into May's bedroom and closed the door. In the morning, as the grandfather and granddaughter were marching merrily in the kitchen, smells came from there as well. They ran into Joe, who at this time had washed up outside and now also came into the house for breakfast. Hello father, hello daughter. How are you two doing? How's the mood? It was fine until I saw you, grandpa muttered, and then looked into the kitchen and said to Mai, come on daughter, we're going to talk. May stepped away from the stove, took off her apron and followed her father. She was ready to talk and knew what she would say to her father. 
Meanwhile, Joe winked at Lily and said, Will you feed your father? You are not my father, but a stranger, so if you want to eat, then eat, but I will not sit at the same table with you. May stood in front of her father all red with anger and angry that he could not understand her. I love him, do you understand? And I don't need anyone else. He's Lily's father, we're family, and I can't kick him out of his own house. Wow. Since when did he become so honorable, and I forgot what he did to you? You were walking like death. It was like your soul was taken out. Dad, it's in the past. Well, it's in the past. It's okay now. We've made up. We've forgiven each other. I wonder why he forgave you. What kind of offense did you cause him? Dad, don't use words. It's just that it's all in the past now, and I've decided that Joe's gonna live with us again. That's what you've decided. Good. Then I'm gonna pack up my things and go home to my place. Do you understand me? I don't want to live in the same house with that man. I told you to leave, but you blamed it on little Lily, that she's fine here, that she's used to it. And now I get it. You just didn't want to get away from him, because I loved him all the time. Dad, don't be angry, you have to understand me too. Dad, I can't help it, I love him very much. So love him. I'm not going to watch this. I'm leaving tonight. I hope you'll let Lily come to me on vacation. She's big enough to come on her own. Dad, don't be silly, but you'll do something alone. Come live with us. You and Joe used to get along so well. Yeah, until he did something like this. I'll tell you something now. I probably don't love him enough to forgive him for what he did. That afternoon, Grandpa left, and Lily sat in her room and cried bitterly. She couldn't bear to look at that Joe. She saw Mama looking at him tenderly, running around trying to please him. Meanwhile, she remembered perfectly well how he turned her down and how they'd come to their senses afterward for a long time after all that. May was happy. She'd forgotten all about her daughter and hadn't noticed the vacation had come. She packed up and went to her grandfather's house. Hearing from Lily, then my character, does not give up, does not talk to me like that. By the way, you know she's gone. Yes, when I went to their room, there was a note on the table. I realized she'd gone to her grandfather's. Let her stay there, and then she'll come back and I'll talk to her, okay? Good, because I feel like I'm in the wrong all the time. She's my daughter, and yet she's a complete stranger to me. No thing, she's just grown up, she's showing her character, proudly carrying the banner of Marxism. But nothing, everything will get better, I promise you. I hope so. And you know that we are now in the house completely alone, and can do whatever we want. Smiling, Joe asked his wife. I like the way you think. She smiled back, took his hand and led him into the bedroom. Grandpa couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a smiling Lily on the threshold. Hello, how are you? Granddaughter, my darling, I'm fine. I missed you so much I was waiting for you to come. I went to register the house I signed it over to you. So it's your inheritance now. Remember, if things get hard, come here and you'll be safe. Do you understand me? Grandpa, what are you talking about? I'm just saying. Believe me, I'm an old man, I've lived a lot on this earth, and I know how hard it can be for all of us, but I don't make the mistake I made. And your mother. If a person betrayed once, he will betray the second time without hesitation. You think so? I think they're in perfect harmony, like two inseparable parrots. Always together. I'm getting kind of excited myself. Maybe you're wrong, Gramps. Maybe this Joe isn't such a bad guy after all. You never said people make mistakes, you should give them a second chance. Maybe you're not always right, but maybe you're right. I just don't believe him. I can't help it. I just don't believe him. May left the store and went home happily. She thought that now she would cook a delicious dinner and meet her husband in a new dress. She had not bought anything for a long time, and now she decided to make him happy with her new dress. She saw Jill walking towards her. She crossed the road not to say hello to this deceiver, but Jill was not confused, followed her, and then when they came closer together, she said, You don't be happy about your happiness for long, Joe will be mine again. You'll see he'll come running to me, because he told me then that you're boring in bed, and he's a man who wants variety. And you don't deceive yourself, because since that time I've wised up and I can please my husband myself. Good for you, but I'm warning you, he'll still be mine. May came home and threw her bags on the floor. Her mood had soured, and she didn't feel like doing anything. She went to the bedroom, changed her clothes, and went to the kitchen. She didn't feel like cooking, so she decided to heat up what was left of lunch for dinner. Soon Joe came in. 
he washed his hands and made his way into the kitchen. After May put a plate in front of him, he looked at her face and realized something was wrong. So, tell me what's up, May told him who she met, and when she left the store, and what their conversation was about. Somebody to listen to. Yeah, it's Jill, she can tell you things. Come on, I love you, I don't need anyone else. May calmed down. At night, when she was asleep, Joe got up quietly and went into the kitchen. Today's conversation reminded him of Jill. You remember how good he had been with her and realized he missed her too. I'd have to visit her sometime, find out how she was doing, what she was up to, because I hadn't heard from her at all. And we are not strangers, we'd have lived together for so many years. The vacation was coming to an end. Lily looked longingly at her grandfather and she didn't want to leave him. There was some unpleasant feeling that she was seeing him for the last time and it was tearing her heart. Grandpa, can I come with you? I'll transfer here from school. I don't want to leave you alone. Don't be silly, granddaughter, I'm fine, you see. You've improved my health. We've been outdoors all the time fishing every morning. So until the next vacation I'm enough, I'll be waiting for you. Jill washed the dishes, put the cups nicely, and was about to go into the room when there was a knock at the window. It was already dark, and she was very surprised because she didn't understand who could come to her at this hour. After Joe had left her, she had stopped seeing men. She was tired. Realizing that no one wanted to get married, everyone just wanted a woman to feed, water, and put to bed. And that didn't suit her. Who's there? It's me, Jill. Are you posting? Yeah. Jill opened the door and couldn't believe her eyes. Joe stood in front of her with a huge bouquet of roses. He smiled and asked, So what's it going to be? Are you going to let me in or are we going to talk at the door? She stepped away from the door, showing him that he could come in. Why are you fighting? I said a lot of things to your wife. She must have been offended, complained to you. You complained, she was offended, but when I heard about you, I was so upset that words can't even describe it. So I thought I'd pay you a visit. Do you mind? No, because I can't stop thinking about you. So I thought you'd gone away. I don't hear from you. I don't see you. What do you do? What do you do? I work in a store as a merchandiser, and I left the factory because I got tired of feeding impudent men who are always getting under my skirt. Now I have a quiet job. I watch the goods. Nobody sees me and I don't want to see anybody. You've changed, Jill. You've changed. And you know, I like you better that way. As time goes on, we get smarter. Joe, tell me what you want from me and get out of here. I gotta go to work. Don't you see why I'm here? I want to reminisce about old times. Don't you want to remember them? I said that's it. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. Let's see. If I kiss you and you tell me to leave, I'll leave immediately and never come back. And if it's the other way around, then we might have something. May couldn't figure out where Joe was lingering. It was already 2 o'clock in the morning and he still hadn't shown up. Then the front door slammed and she saw her husband on the doorstep. Where have you been so long? I was beginning to worry. Let's go to the kitchen, I'll tell you everything. Listen, we've been offered a hack job, but you can only work at night, you know? But I'll earn so much money that we've never dreamed of. We'll buy a car, get you and your daughter a fur coat. You'll be my queens. Listen, Joe, that's a lot of work. How are you going to work during the day? May, don't you know me? I'd do anything for you, so don't worry. Besides, it won't take long. I think we can do it in a month, and then we'll see. Listen, feed me, please, I'm so hungry and sleepy, because I have to get up early for work tomorrow. May fussed, feeling calm again. She began to feed her husband, realizing how much she loved him after all. Lily came home and sadly told her mother how good it was with her grandfather and how she did not want to leave him. Nothing, your father and I will choose a time. We will go to him and talk to us to come back again. We and my dad. Sounds ridiculous. By the way, where is he? Time's a long time. He should have gotten home from work a long time ago. Yeah, he and the guys took some hack job to make some extra money. And soon we bought a car. We'll change your clothes. That's what he does. He works nights. I wonder who he's working with because me and the girls passed him by. His whole crew is there. It's someone's birthday, I think. May tensed. An unpleasant chill ran down her spine, but she didn't jump to conclusions because she realized that it was quite possible that her husband was just going to the bathroom at that time, and Lily might not have seen him. When he got home, she would be sure to check with him, 
But right now, she wasn't going to spoil her mood. Jill was happy. For almost a month now, Joe had been coming to her, giving her gifts, telling her he loved her. She tried not to rush things, realizing that it was the rush and everything that ruined her then, but now she had wised up. She would bide her time, not make scandals, not asking why, for example, he didn't come or something like that. Let his may go crazy, but she wouldn't. Now she would definitely not let her own go, and sooner or later Joe would stay with her. May sat in the kitchen, looking tensely at the clock. Time was running out. Joe was still gone, and she began to worry, thinking that her father was probably right, and he was up to his old tricks again. Where have you been so long? She asked as soon as Joe appeared on the doorstep. May, you're at it again, I told you, I've been working. And who did you work with today, for example? Joe looked at his wife, realizing there was a catch in the question. He remembered how the guys called him to the cafe to celebrate a colleague's birthday, and he didn't go because he had a meeting with May. Owen was working because everyone was at the birthday party. I approached them at the end, congratulated them, but I didn't drink because it's already late, and tomorrow they'll all work, and I'll rest at home. That you were worried for nothing, let's go to bed, because I'm very tired. May calmed down, hugged her husband, and they went to the bedroom together. The days went on for days. Lily was already in 11th grade and went to her grandfather's house again for the vacations. May also worked at the pharmacy and Joe worked at the factory. Today was her friend's birthday. The girls came over, they had closed at lunchtime to celebrate. They talked about their men, who was unhappy with what. May couldn't take it anymore. There's a lot going on at the factory. They promised to raise wages, but they don't raise them and our men are working. But they pay me only money and they feed me breakfast all the time. I'm already telling my husband to look for another job, but he doesn't want to, he says he's used to it. It's strange, but they did raise wages at the factory. My neighbor can't get enough of it, they say they're getting good wages now. So you're confused, May. I heard the conversation myself. I don't get it. You're the one who's confused. All right, I'll find out for myself. The chief accountant from the factory is coming to see us, so I'll ask her and then we'll see who's confusing what. That day, May must have been affected by alcohol, because she soon forgot all about this conversation. In the evening, when she came home from work, she did not wait for her husband, because she could hardly stand on her feet. She went to bed and immediately fell asleep. She didn't know what time her husband came home from work. Jill was happy. She could see that Joe was attracted to her, and that every night after work, he went not home to his wife, but to her. So her plan was paying off, she was still behaving the same way with him, she didn't insist that he come, but she didn't kick him out either. And if he wanted to leave earlier she didn't tell him anything, and if he stayed for a long time and was genuinely happy about it. Joe himself couldn't understand what was happening to him. He remembered how he wanted to get back to his wife, but he was drawn to Jill. She had changed a lot, she had become gentle, kind, always happy to see him. Coming home, he fed stories to his wife, saying that they are in a complete mess at work now, but soon everything will settle down and then you will come earlier. She believed his stories, thinking that he wouldn't deceive her anymore because they had agreed that they would never lie to each other. May arrived at work as usual, put on her robe and walked to her room to make herself some coffee. Kate came in and gave her a weird look. Hey friend, why are you looking at me so strangely? Is something wrong? Yeah, nothing's wrong. I just wanted to ask you a question. Is everything okay with your husband? Yeah. Joe and I are great, yeah. Why do you ask? There's a rumor going around the village that he's getting involved with our Jill again. Giving her expensive gifts, visiting her at night. You haven't noticed anything strange, have you? May felt cold. She wanted to say something, but she didn't have time because the phone rang. She picked up the phone. Listening. Mom, mom, grandpa died today at the hospital. Come over. She heard her daughter's sobbing voice. May rushed to her bag and took off her robe. Where? What happened? Kate, my dad's dead. I gotta go. So you work today and tomorrow call someone for a shift because I probably won't be here for a few days. Oh, I gotta go. Lily's gonna go crazy alone. She loved her grandfather so much. I'll go. I'll just tell my husband if he'll come with me, it'll be easier for me. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Don't worry, everything will be fine here. When the door closed behind May, Kate said, but wow, such a good broad, what these men can't get enough of, 
they still looked left. When Joe was told that his wife was waiting at the gatehouse, he realized that she had probably found out about everything. He didn't want to go, because he didn't want to lose May. But the men were already hinting to him that the whole village knew that he was seeing Jill again, so she had found out. He sighed and went to her. On the way he thought about what to say for himself, she stood there in tears and just looked at him. May, I'm so sorry, you know I'm. Daddy's dead, can you get off work and come with me? But make it quick, because you're there, all alone. Sure, honey, I'll do it right away and I'll get the money. I'll be right back, honey. Everything's gonna be okay. He ran happily down the hall. He was happy that his wife still had no idea. He had to be very careful from now on and make sure that there were fewer rumors and that they weren't talked about anymore. Lily was painful to look at. She had lost a lot of weight and gauntness over the days. She told her mother that the girl had gotten sick and he had been taken to the hospital. She visited him, brought him vitamins and cooked something delicious for him. He went on the mend and began to feel much better. Then early one morning she got a call that he had died. Ma, how am I going to live without grandpa now? because I have no one more dear to me than him. What about me? You have me, Dad. We have a family. You're not alone. No, Mom, you don't notice how this man has replaced me and your father. You're with him all the time, and you don't remember me from time to time. I'm used to having no one else but my grandfather. May's heart snapped and became so painful from the words of her daughter that she did not know what to say, just sat down to be able to heartage. Mom, are you sick? No, I'm fine, it's just everything just kind of piled up. I didn't think my father would die, because I never came to see him, never visited him once. I need to get the documents reissued, it's an inheritance after all. Grandpa did it a long time ago, he signed it over to me, he said the house is mine now. He's always thought of everything, then fine, let it be as he decided. After the funeral in the evening they sat at grandfather's house and drank tea. Joe looked at the house and said, I propose to sell it, that it will stand here, for there is no need to travel here now. Let's go to a realtor tomorrow, he'll help us sell it. No, it's my house and I'm not going to sell it, let's keep it as it is. No, Grandpa told me I can't sell it, so I'll do what he told me. Lily, do what you want. I just suggested it, and if Grandpa said so, then we're not going to touch anything. Calm down, when will you finally realize that I'm your father, and I love you very much? and you don't need to see me as an enemy. You don't love anyone else but yourself, not your mom, not me. Why are you saying? Dad admitted his mistakes, so now he has to be reminded of them for the rest of his life. Mom, but how can you not see that he is a bad man, you yourself 100 times regret that took him back? Lily didn't have time to say anything, because May slapped her. It was the first time she had hit her child in so long. Lily looked hatefully at her, and then at Joe, who pretended nothing was happening and left the room. May looked after Lily and couldn't understand what was going on with her lately. She looked at Joe, who was silently pretending to drink tea. It's nothing, it'll pass. She just got a bit carried away and I couldn't listen to any more of it. Well, I'll go too, I'm exhausted. The next day they left. Lily didn't talk. A May didn't insist. If she wanted to, love her sulk at her, it's just that she's still a child and should watch her words. Joe walked, May and Lily home, and said he had to go to work to find out from the guys how things were going. He ran to the flower store, bought some flowers and went to Jill's house. He missed her terribly all these days and he couldn't wait to see her. He forgot about everything, even the fact that he had to be very careful now. She opened the door for him, threw herself around his neck. I missed you so much. You left without telling me. The girls told me later where you were going. How's Lily? I know how much she loved Grandpa. How's May? She's fine with them. You better tell me, how are you? What did you do in that time without me? The usual. Work, own, own, work. Nothing new. True, they've asked me several times if we're in love again or just carnal pleasures, and I pretended I didn't know what they were talking about. That's right. What you and I have going on is nobody's business. Am I saying that right? That's right, honey, because it's just our feelings and we're not gonna let anyone else get in the middle of it. Lately May felt very bad. Her heart was aching, her father's death, quarrels with her daughter, and then there were constant hints from everyone she knew that her husband had taken up his old ways. She didn't want to believe it because she knew that if it was true, she had betrayed everyone, both father and daughter. 
Kate looked at her and shook her head. Listen to May. The heart is no joke, you know? Go to the hospital, then it might be too late, and you've got a daughter who's about to graduate from high school. Have you thought about her? I'm fine. Kate, you don't have to worry, it's just that my dad's death really shook me up. It's a shame that after he left, and I never got to see him. I said hi to him through Lily, who was waiting for vacation, and went to see her grandfather. How are you and Lily? Did you make up? Yes, of course, but she tries not to touch me, we hardly talk. Don't you think that's normal? I don't know, Kate, I guess. I feel really bad for her, so every day I forgive her. She says she's not mad at me. But I can tell something's wrong. She's grown up, she can see things. You are the one who can't see past your own nose. Why are you talking about? Nothing. I was just making a point. All right, let's get back to work. The stuff's here, it's got to be unpacked and put on the shelf, and you and I are just standing here talking. Joe took the early morning off. He went to work as usual and warned his wife he'd be late. He went to Jill's. He couldn't keep his eyes off her, and she was very nice to him, doing everything she could to make him feel good about himself. May came home from work, went into the kitchen, put the kettle on. She no longer looked at the clock, as before, no longer waited for anyone. She was tired. The kettle boiled, and she made herself some tea. Took the mug from sitting down at the table. She watched the sugar floating in the cup, sitting down nice and quiet. It was easy on her soul, on her heart a dull ache, and that had settled recently and never let go. She took a sip and realized she was starting to choke. Sadness clenched and she felt really bad. She jumped out onto the porch, breathed in some fresh air, and felt a little better. Lily came out to the noise and looked at her mom and asked, Mom, are you okay? You don't look so good. I'm really not okay. I want to walk a little bit in the street. I think I'll feel better. Mom, I'm with you. I'm not letting you go in this condition. You've got exams to study for. It's only a few days away. Mom, this is a school, not an institute, so I know the school program perfectly well. Let's go. Besides, we won't be long. We'll walk a bit, and as soon as you feel better, we'll go home right away and they went out into the street, slowly walked down the deserted street. Mom, listen, let's go to a doctor. We can't do that, in case you have something serious. And if something happens to you, I won't survive it, do you understand? Okay, daughter, I'll go to the hospital and I'll go tomorrow. For your sake, honey, I'll do anything. Mom, I love you very much and I understand what's happening to you. Only I know that we'll be fine. That's what my grandfather always told me. But if that's what my dad said, then that's how it's gonna be, yeah. They had reached the end of the street when May noticed a couple strolling leisurely along the sidewalk. They all stopped every now and then and kissed, said something to each other, then laughed. She looked closely and realized everything, only she couldn't say anything. She didn't know what was happening to her, only heard her daughter screaming. Joe and Jill lay in bed all day. They kissed, they caressed each other, they felt good. Why did you leave me then? because you see how good we are together. I don't know, I was just angry that you lied to me, and Tony started hitting on my wife, so I got jealous. And then when I got back, I realized that Lily was all grown up, that she didn't think of me as a man, and May's dad didn't understand me. I came home right away. May was the only one left, but I got bored with her quickly. I remember the day she told me she'd met you and I stayed up all night thinking about you. Then I decided to come home, and I still can't imagine how I'll live without you. I realize I have to do something, but I don't know how. Don't be in a hurry, we made such a mess in a hurry that I don't want to do it again. You were right, sweetheart. You were right, honey, time will tell us how to do it. Remember I told you that a friend of mine is selling her car and needs money. She's selling it for half price. I was wondering if you could help me buy it. Can't you wait a little while? I don't have any money right now. I'm spending all my money on you. Sweetheart, if she waits a little while, I'll get Lily to sell Grandpa's house, and then I'll take the car off your hands, okay? Okay, I'll talk to her. I think she'll go for it. Look, it's getting dark. Let's go for a walk. There's no one out at this time, and we've been in the house all day. Come on, my queen, your word is law. They walked quietly on the sidewalk, kissing all the time, reminding themselves of two teenagers. Behind another kiss, they didn't notice two figures watching them. It wasn't until Joe heard a scream that he realized they had been caught. May struggled to open her eyes, 
she couldn't realize where she was. Then I wanted to turn around, because as it seemed to her she wasn't lying comfortably. But she couldn't. She closed her eyes again. She didn't know if she was asleep or unconscious. She could only see her father standing there looking at her and saying nothing. She called out to him, shouted for him to say a word to her, but he was silent and just staring. She opened her eyes again and saw the doctor who was standing near her, writing something down. Great, you finally come to your senses. May, well May, the worst is over. You're alive, and the rest will follow. Tell me if you can move. For example, raise your left arm. May tried to figure out where it was and then lift it, but she couldn't. Can you say it like that? She tried to open her mouth, but that didn't work either. Okay, you had a stroke, and to be honest, I thought we couldn't save you. But as you can see, it's all over. But now we're gonna get you back on your feet. It's gonna take time and money, but I'll tell your husband and daughter that. Lily couldn't find her place. She paced back and forth in the waiting room and waited for the doctor. Not far away, Joe was sitting on the couch, pretending to sleep. They hadn't spoken since the incident. Lily was disgusted. She knew before that her father was deceiving her mother, but I thought they would see it with their own eyes. When the doctor came out, Lily ran over to see how her mom was feeling. She's passed into consciousness, but she's completely paralyzed. She can't even speak. Can I see her? Come in while I talk to your father, you can stay with her. Lily went into the room and looked at her mom. She was lying there unmoving and didn't even turn her head when she heard someone come in. Mom, how are you feeling? Lily whispered, struggling to hold back tears. And May looked at her daughter, a tear rolling down from her eye. Lily saw that her mother recognized her. Mom, I'll do anything to get you back on your feet, you hear me? I'll do anything for that. Lily came home, and soon Joe came home. Your mother needs medicine and treatment, and I don't have that kind of money. Besides, she and I were going to get a divorce, so I'm not gonna watch her. You'll walk by yourself in the hospital. You can live here too. I'm not kicking you out because you're my daughter, but I forbid you to meddle in my personal life. Do you understand? As you may have noticed, I'm in love with another woman and it's mutual. From this day forward, she will live with me. I'll forgive you to treat her with respect. Shalda also called her mom. May met you call her mom. Shut your mouth. I told you, if you want to live in this house, you have to listen to me or I'll throw you out like a kitten. Lily couldn't get into the institute. She had been taking care of her mother for a year, but nothing helped. She needed medicine, special gymnastics, but it all cost money she worked part-time during the day and ran to her mother in the evening. She was allowed to stay at the hospital, so she was less likely to be at her father's house. She couldn't stand Jill, who threw out all of her mother's things, saying she didn't need them anymore. She had remodeled the whole house, and now it was vulgar and uncomfortable. Lily sat next to her mother and didn't understand how she could get her back on her feet. Time was passing, something had to be done, but she couldn't, she just didn't have the means. She herself did not notice how she fell asleep and dreamed of her grandfather. He stroked her head affectionately and told her that she had forgotten his most important words, that when his grandfather was very difficult, she should come to his house and the house would help her. She woke up all in tears. Mom was lying with her eyes closed, apparently still asleep. She got ready, kissed her mom and before going to work, she decided to run home to change her clothes. What do you want here? Jill asked angrily, looking at Lily. I need to change, I won't be here long. You were already here with your mom. You should have taken her to her grandfather's house or sold it and put her mother on her feet. But no, you're waiting for your dad to help you, but for nothing. He won't give you a penny. And even if he did, I'd never take it from him because I don't consider him a father, he's nobody to me. But if he did, I'm going to get it. But if that's the case, then pack your things and I'm getting out of this house, got it? with pleasure, because they're so sick of all of you. Lily walked out of the house with a bag of her things and for some reason there wasn't much. Apparently Jill had thrown her things out too. She remembered the dream and decided not to go to work, but to drive over there to her grandfather's house and think about what she should do next. Maybe she should really take her mom home. Maybe she'll feel better, Lily thought. Lily walked up to her grandfather's house, which looked very abandoned without him. She sighed, took out her key and opened the door. Walked through the rooms, remembering how nice they had always been here. Then she walked through the rooms again. During the night, she dreamed of her grandfather again. 
He was standing on the rug in the great room, pointing his finger at his feet. Lily woke up and couldn't tell if it was a dream or if Grandpa had really come to see her that night. She walked to the room where he was standing, walked across the dusty carpet. The middle of the carpet, the floorboards creaked strangely somehow. It was in that exact spot. She saw a small plank there that had separated from the floor. She pulled it, it gave in and Lily saw a recess, in it a small box. She took it out and opened it, and then she cried. You know granddaughter, my relative was a favor of the queen herself, she remembered her grandfather's story, and as it turned out, it was true. Joe hadn't seen Lily for a long time and thought she would probably start the hospital. He wasn't interested in what was happening to her, how she was living. All his thoughts were occupied with Jill, who for some reason was no longer the same as she used to be. She quit her job, sat at home all day and constantly whined that he made very little money. At first he didn't pay attention to it, and then he began to explain that he earns very well, and then began to get angry at her. If you don't like it, go to work yourself. What else do you want from me? You've already drunk all my blood, I have no strength at all. He left the house and decided to go for a walk to cool down and not to see Jill's angry face. His feet brought him to the hospital, he had not been to his wife for so long that he felt ashamed. Lily had been by her side for a whole year, and then somehow she'd stopped coming. He hadn't seen her, and then he'd forgotten all about her. But now he decided to go in and see how May was doing, to see if she was better. Everyone used to tell him he had to help his wife, but he said he'd done all he could. It was just that her father's death was affecting her and that he was powerless. Then he said that she wanted to divorce him and they were no longer living together, but were complete strangers to each other. He found a doctor and asked how May was feeling. Boy, you should have come back like this in a year or two. Her daughter took her away a long time ago, I don't know where. But recently she came to visit us and she had to pick up some certificates here. Tell me honestly, the girl married a rich man because she came in a cool car, but she's dressed so nicely, it's obvious that she got a rich man. What about May? She's fine now, Lily's got her back on her feet. But they've gone away from here and where they live now, I don't know. Joe came home and went into the kitchen. He took out a glass and poured himself some vodka, drank it in one gulp and sat down on a chair. Jill looked at him in surprise, but didn't dare to ask what was wrong. She saw that he was thinking about something and waited for him to tell her. I was in the hospital today. I had a guilty conscience. I went to see May, and she'd been gone a long time, and so has Lily. The doctor said she drove by in some fancy car. She must have married very well. Lily's a rich woman now. That's why it's like this. Some people get lucky all the time and I don't. I thought I'd start living with you again, so you'd buy me a car and a fur coat, but you just promise. I have nothing. I've been wearing the same fur coat for two years. I'm embarrassed in front of my friends. So go out and earn your own money if you don't like how much I earn. I spent all my money on you while I was living with May, and she didn't ask me for a penny because she was earning good money herself. We always had everything at home, even though we had a daughter. You have no one and you don't have enough. I'm so sick of you, I can't even look at you anymore. You think I love you, but I only use you all the time I didn't need you. I just always thought you were talking about May like that, so prove that I'm a hundred times better. So I got you. You're just like me. And if you appreciated what she did for you, you never would have left her. And now, even if you want to go back to her, she'll never accept you. May is kind, she'll accept me and I'll have a normal life. I'll find out where they live and prove to you that she'll accept me and we'll be together again. Understand? Joe started making inquiries about his wife and daughter, but no one knew anything. Then he remembered about his grandfather's house and decided that when the weekend came, he would go there and find out what had happened to them, whether they had sold the house or were still living there. Sunday. Early in the morning Joe got ready, said nothing to Jill and drove to the village where May had once lived, where he had first met her and fallen in love with her. He walked down the familiar road and thought that, like theirs, little had changed here. Now he would come around the corner and see May's father's house. If it had been sold, he would try to find out where they might have gone. He looked at the house with all his eyes, but another thing surprised him. Just as years ago he had seen May standing on the porch doing something there, so he saw her this time. She was standing there in a light-colored dress, very pretty, saying something to someone. He shifted his eyes and saw Lily in an embrace with some young man. 
They were laughing and chatting merrily about something. He watched from the sidelines, with envy in his heart, because he would have given anything to be standing next to them, to have Lily calling him by his daddy and May hugging him gently around the waist. He stepped out of the shadows of the trees he'd been watching. May noticed him, the smile escaped her lips, and she looked at Joe, no longer smiling. Her daughter shifted her gaze and frowned as well. Hello, May. Hi, Lily. I thought I'd come and see how you were doing. Lily came forward with a menacing look, but May stopped her gently. Lily, you wanted to go to the river with Henry. Lily, go, I need to talk to you. Mom, please. I'm, I know. I'm telling you that you can trust me. I know, just don't worry. I know, but don't worry, remember, your health is still weak and you can't worry. I remember my happiness, go easy, everything will be fine. When Lily and the young man had gone, May came down from the porch and went outside the wicket. Why don't you even invite me into the house? Or have you gotten rich and gotten conceited? Don't count our money, you didn't give it to us, you better count yours. Jill's a great bookkeeper, she'll put it to good use. Have you even seen yourself in the mirror? You're wearing things I used to buy you. And Jill, that's better. She's only doing it for herself, she's doing it for you, she doesn't give a shit. And you've become cruel. I had good teachers and you know I'm grateful to you, because if you hadn't, I would have lived my life believing every word you said. And now I'm happy. I have a wonderful man next to me, my daughter is happy, she and her young man want to get married. I'm also enrolled in college study, and if we live with you, we would have none of this as you have